Okay, hopefully uh, we had a chance to take advantage of getting an extra day here uh, in preparation coming off of uh, last game. Um, it's a big matchup, two hungry teams getting ready to go on Monday night. Um, the Bears had a terrific game going, and then, you know, we, as we all know, Aaron Rodgers kind of stole the show at the end of it. But they uh, they had a really good-looking night going, and, and they showed their defense, showed their offense, showed their the playmaking, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And and so we've seen we've seen them, uh, and you know they we, they deserve a lot of respect. So uh, it's a great opportunity for us. We got to get back on track. You know, get rid of all that first week stuff and and uh, play a good football game, execute well, and uh, see if we can get ourselves a win on the road. Pete, what did you see out of Mitchell Trubisky? He's one of your first times probably to look at him. What, what, what kind of stood out to you about him? He's really athletic. Um, he he uh, ran the ball seven times in the game, you know, so he was out and going. Uh, took off in a couple scrambles. They they utilized him to run the ball with him. Um, he's got good good suddenness to him, you know. He can make people miss a little bit. So he, he, that part stood out. He had a, he has a really strong arm. He threw some great balls in the game. He had a nice night completion percentage wise. You know, twenty three for thirty five is a big night. Um, so uh, you know he looked good. And you know they they've got a nice running game to complement a young quarterback, which is just how you like to do it. And and um, so he complimented well. Is also really known for the up tempo and all that at Oregon. How much of that influence can you see in what they're doing? Or? They've got the ability to do all that. You know, I mean, you can see it's all over the league. The teams are messing with tempo and all that. So, uh, nothing new for us, but it is, it's you know, we know that their backgrounds certainly with you know with Mark, you know, here in the college game and then out of Oregon, and as well as you know, Matt's a uh, big time coordinator coming from Andy's system and all that. These guys, they got a, they got a lot of ideas and a lot of good ideas that, that make it hard. Teams use more tempo. Offenses use more tempo in the NFL. What's the key for a defense to keep that from affecting them? Well, one of the you know one of the basic thoughts is that you try to wear the defense down with the tempo, where they don't get the rest in the huddle, and uh, so the mentality has to be you have to be ready for it. You know, you have to be ready to just go at a, at a higher rate. It's not a problem in in terms of getting your plays called and your defensive calls in and all that. It doesn't simplify us at all. Um, it's just no huddle defense as well as no huddle offense. But there is a thought that you know the offense is trying to wear you down a little bit and see if they can take advantage of, you know, guys not just being quite quite as crisp as they would be otherwise. Can you compare Khalil Mack's skill set with what you saw last week with Von Miller? They're, they're different style athletes, but they're both extremely effective and really difficult. Um, Khalil's you know, just stronger looking guy, you know, more plays, um, you know, more at you, brings the, brings the attack to the, to you. And, and Vaughn's all over the place. He's just so, so athletic and so quick. He's they're just different style guys, but their effect is very similar. Brandon Marshall, to, to be able to get him the time here you did and then what he's provided so far and knowing that he's a guy you can count on now, just how good of an addition was that? Yeah, it, it looks great. It look, really, we're really happy about it. And, and it took us a while, you know, to, to appreciate him in, until we were really ready to use him enough in practice and in, the, in uh, preseason to see him go. Um, you, you always could see that, you know, he's got a beautiful – catching range and, and he's got great savvy and understanding and all that but we didn't know if he's gonna be physically okay you know and and once he rounded into shape and we could start to use him he looks like a, a terrific asset so uh, we're really excited about having him you ever talk to him about the catch he made in 2012 against the US no that, that. no I, I was gonna ask about that game you mentioned trying to go get a win on the road the road games were maybe a struggle early on and then you guys have been better in recent years how much was that game kind of a turning point to the 2012 that was a really big, yeah. That was a big game. It was a big game for for the coaching staff to recognize that we needed to let let loose for Russell, you know, and not hold him back. We were treating him like a young quarterback that needed to be, you know, kind of corralled so that you know we didn't put him in in situations he wasn't prepared prepared for. And it was in that in the middle of that game when I remember saying to the coaches, "Let's let's go, cut him loose, don't hold him back, you know, let him have a chance to to do it all." And and. Uh, and he pretty much did. He let, I think he let us down in, in regulation, and then he let us down the field again in overtime, back to back. And, and uh, you know, that was really kind of the, the jump start for us. Speaking of young quarterbacks, do you guys think you guys can do something to manipulate Trubisky and maybe force him into a lot of errors since he's so pretty young? Well, you always hope so. You know, you wish you wish the young guy, uh, you know, kind of makeup would would 
be difficult, you know, and we could take advantage of that. But the young quarterbacks are so well prepared. Um, they're so much farther along than they used to be. And, and uh, you know, Mitchell did, he did a really nice job. And they were trying all kinds of stuff at him. He, he, he was good, you know, in, in, the, in the first game out uh, this year. So, I don't know, you know, you always hope that you can get a guy that, you know, he's, he's shown things that he hadn't seen before and it makes him uh, change his rhythms and stuff like that. And you can pressure him and you, you try to mix the stuff up. But, um, you know, I got a lot of respect for these guys. These guys have played a lot of football, and they, it's hard to fool them. Uh, they're well coached and well schooled and well systemed and, and all that. And, and uh, but we're still going to try. You know, we'll still try and see if we can make it hard on them. Any closer to getting uh, DJ Fluker back? Um, he, to, he's day to day, really. We're, we're looking at him every day, see what you know, what each day tells us. So I don't know that anything more than that. Pete, when you have a younger player or a rookie who maybe doesn't perform as well in a game as they had hoped. What are, the, what are the steps you take to kind of build them up or to get them ready for their next opportunity? That's good. Um, you know, we, we want, hit, want the, every player to be settled and, and, and poised and, and, uh, and really, you know, in control of their brain from going haywire and crazy with, you know, with what could happen. And so, uh, you know, we're always trying to simplify and always trying to make it more clear to them uh, so that they they can keep their, their mind more quieted. You know, it's, it's the mind that's rattling and jumping around and they're all sped up and all that, that makes it difficult. So you're trying to quiet them. And, and so it's in the language that we use to them, the the way we would work to simplify even more, you know, each week and, and, and knock things out, put things that we're causing an issue or a concern for the kid and see if we can make it more you know more clear for him and so it's it's really it's it's everything you can do to try to just lessen the burden of the activity you know what it gets in their in their brain when they want to get all sped up and fired up and 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 they don't execute clearly and, and you know succinctly like they should you talked in preseason about Shaquem and run fits and discipline and gaps was that some of the issue in Denver um, it's always going to be, you know, in this first, all the way through this whole first season and, and into next year, that's just getting really sharp because that stuff takes a long time to do really well uh, and, and consistently. He um, he didn't have a uh, he didn't have many plays in the running game that, that he didn't fit up right. He was pretty sharp on that stuff for the most part. How important is it to get the running game going and more involved? In it's huge. It's huge. It's huge for us, and and uh, uh, we have to convert on third down so that we can get the next series going and and, and expand the you know. The, the playlist, you know, and let you see what we're trying to do. Um, but without the running game, you're, you're going to feel like it, you, you don't control the game at all. And, and so um, it's a big deal. It always has been for us, and we were always um, – Aiming at it, making it a balanced attack that it's difficult for the for the your opponent to figure out what you're doing and all, and also helps the, the pass game. It helps the pass protection and all of that. Um, and it, it keeps you, the running game keeps you you know ahead of the sticks, and that's that's a really important part of it. So that the, the third down distances are, are controlled better, and so it's it's just it's absolutely paramount. You know that, that we're on it there, the kicking it in the running game. Looking back on it last week, why don't you think it worked as well as you wanted it to as far as number of carries for those guys? Yeah, we were two for 12 on third down. Yeah, we messed it up. We didn't give ourselves a chance to convert. And really there was uh, five, third and five or lesses that we needed to get every one of those, and we didn't. And so uh, then we start all over again. It's first down again, and you get the, all, the whole rhythm of the game is much different. So it's interesting how it always kind of comes out to that third down conversion numbers will, will, make an, uh, will give you the indicator of how, how that went. Is there any more uh, Doug Baldwin? Any more specificity to how long he might be out? Or no, sorry. How about, how about KJ? Right. Um, he's he's running today. He felt pretty good. Um, we'll see how he goes with it. He's going day to day. So he this was uh, he ran yesterday uh, and he's working out again today. So he hasn't done that yet. But um, he's making progress. He's feeling pretty good. Keenan Reynolds, what, what did you see in him in the preseason? And, you know, I guess how ready do you feel like he would be? for? Yeah, we really we really felt like we could re count on him. You know, he was very dependable and, and uh, really bright, really smart player that that uh, did things right. Russ really could could rely on him. Uh, you know, he took a lot of snaps, of Doug snaps in, in, uh, during preseason and practice and all that. And he, he showed us that he's a guy you could really count on. He's a great kid. And he's... he's uh, good technique-wise, he's good scheme-wise, and he's tough and, and can do stuff with the ball too. So he, he just did a good job. We were really impressed with him. The military background, do, do you notice that when just when you when you're around him or <coughs> talking to him? Is, is that a no, uh, no, not really. Matter of fact, I've I have quizzed him on some stuff at times, just wondering about the experience of it and and, and all and. Um, 
I found myself being a little bit surprised of his responses and, and all, uh, that he wasn't more regimented. He wasn't you know, maybe more like you would think he would be. Um, he's, a, he's a good kid, real bright, really drew a lot from his experience there, but maybe not in the way that you might think. Have you ever posted another guy from a service academy? Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Practice squad guys. I don't want to look at you. Taking those guys on the road. I mean, for a guy like Keenan now he's up, how valuable is that that they get the experience of being on the road and doing all this stuff while they're on the practice squad so that when they come up, they... I, that's, that's a big part of the reason that we do it. I don't know what other teams do, but we've been doing that for a while, and, and it's to get them connected and closer to the experience of it so that when it happens, they have at least been as close as they could get. And uh, so in this case, unfortunately, and fortunately for him, that it worked out. Reynolds on. Oh, you'd like to know. Absolutely would like to know. Army game was not. Uh, I'm not telling you. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Talk about what it felt like to be dominant you know, over the Army. It kind of is. So he, but in classy fashion, he was, really, he was really good about how he handled that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Pete, Trey Flowers. This is a conversation. Very few people know why we're doing that. Yes. Trey Flowers' transition from safety to corner. What have been the traits he's shown that have allowed him to make progress? Uh, he's he, because of you know he did it for three over three years of starting time. So he had tons of games that he played. Um, all of the situations um, that you get in, and he was an active safety too, and involved and played a lot of stuff that he got to be involved in the running game and the pass game. And he had some man-to-man -man stuff, so he's, he's done, he had done a lot of stuff. But he had had such a vast experience of stuff that, that goes beyond what a corner would experience. I thought that could help him in general. Um, he's a real savvy, aware football player. Makes sense to him. The game's not difficult for him at all. And I think it's because he's been in the middle of so much, you know. Kind of like a quarterback has a feel for the whole game, different than other positions. Kind of as he played, I felt like he had a real – you know, sense that could help him, you know, in, in making the transition, so. With other safeties you've tried out there, haven't worked, what have been the things that have, have prevented them from being successful when they try to make that switch? That's a really good one, Danny. Um, well, I, I have a couple of real specific ones, matter of fact. That I'm not going to tell you who they are. But um, uh, there's a whole mentality that, uh, that playing out there, and particularly when you're a press team like we are, and we put you right on the line of scrimmage, and you're playing the fastest, best athletes in the world playing playing the game, that uh, can be overwhelming. You know, it can be daunting to you know to have to face that play in and play out. And uh, not everybody always embraced that mentality, that challenge of that, because they have to really be disciplined. They have to be disciplined mentally and not let what just happened affect them. That's the old thing you think about corners, but it's not just about getting beat deep and how do you come back. It's about um, al allowing the, the information to kind of go away and go back to the technique, particularly the way we play and we're so dedicated to pressing that it's, it's really about the discipline of the next snap, the next step you take and, and you're focused back in again. So if you're a guy that has trouble, you know, turning the rest of the world away, then, then it's, it's, it's a harder process. And, and uh, he was really, really sharp, as was Shaq. You know, Shaq was, both these guys have been very similar in the way they've handled the start of this thing and, and uh, been really impressive in that. What ultimately happened with, with Dante Johnson that led to you having to put him on IR? Um, well, he was injured. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with him? Was there something? No, no, he was injured. And uh, he wasn't going to get back for a while, so we had to do something. We, we, he did a nice job for us, you know, he, he and had done a nice job, but he wasn't going to be available. So we had to, you know, sometimes you got to make some moves that, that are not the comfortable moves to make, but you got to do them because of the issues that you have, and that's kind of where that one <coughs> fell. Pete, where are you at with your pass rush coming out of that game? Um, we got stuck on the line of scrimmage on the play passes. It was really the part that I was really disappointed in that uh, we didn't respond better to get into our pass rush mode. That's the that just happened, and, and uh, so it's, it's, that's one phase of it. And, and uh, we would like to have got off on the edge a little bit better than we did. So it was just stuff that we just got to you know keep working on. KJ can't go Monday. Does Shaquem go back out there as your starter at linebacker? We'll, we'll see as we get through the week. Has there been more thought about CJ Procise in that slot role, and how comfortable would you be with him doing those kind of things? Not, not specifically. He's a really good receiver for the running back, and, and uh, so you know we like using him in that fashion. But I think you're thinking, would he take over like Doug Baldwin's place or something like that? You know, we won't tell him that we're doing that or not doing that if you don't mind. 
How much different did the defense look with Earl on the field versus the 10, 15 plays he was not? No, there was not a big difference. And Earl, Earl had two huge plays you know, early on right out of the shoots uh, with the tip ball that could have been a pick and then the one that he got. But um, those plays and those opportunities didn't arise uh, when, when Tedrick was back there, so I you know, couldn't tell. But um, Tedrick's been really solid for us. We didn't feel like it changed much at, at all. And, and you know, if you're thinking that the, the results of the drives are because Tedrick was in the game, I didn't, that's not what happened. Okay, anything else?